Known as the father of country music, the blue yodeler, and the singing break man, he was the main recording artist in the world at the time. I'm talking about Jimmy Rogers. Hello folks, this is your friend Luva Roberts. Welcome to my presentation video. Today we're going to be talking about the life and work of Jimmy Rogers. As once said by Bob Dylan, he was the man who started it all. He was the first nationally known country music star. An artist who in only six years recorded more than a hundred songs and influenced artists such as Hank Snow, Lefty Frizzell, Ernest Tubb, Gene Autry, Hank Williams, Mil Bill Monroe, Merle Haggard, and many, many others. Although he had an Although he had been an incredibly popular singer-songwriter, American singer-songwriter, and musician in the late 1920s, his simple, straightforward style still resonates today. Back in 1933, Jimmy was the Elvis of his time. Everybody wanted to be Jimmy Roberts, and we're about to know why. Jimmy was born in Meridian, Mississippi on September 8, 1897. He lost his mother at age six. His dad worked on the railroad, and he was raised by his auntie. In his childhood, he learned how to play the banjo, the mandolin, and the guitar. He won a talent contest at age 13 and ran away with some traveling medicine show at the time. His father got him back and got him working as a water boy on the railroad. Then he did loads of other types of jobs on the rail then he did loads of other types of jobs on the railroad, but he was always looking for the chance to make a living out of music. He got married when he was 19 and separated just a few months later. He got married again in 1920. He was so passionate about music that he used to spend all of his money on records and tickets to concerts. He joined another traveling show in 1923, performing many blues numbers at the time, but some bad news was coming his way. His six-month-old daughter had died. He lost his six-month-old daughter, and not long after that, he was diagnosed with tuberculosis, which was the leading cause of death in the States at the time. He quit the railroad jobs and went back to the music. He quit the railroad jobs and went back to music as a last try. He he was mainly playing for dancers and joining medicine shows. He moved to Asheville, North Carolina in 1927, looking for some fresh mountain air to improve his health. Around the time, Asheville had just Asheville had its first radio station, and Jimmy was able to perform along with his partner Otis Quickhandle. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Uh, he joined the, the Tenevi, uh, Teneva, excuse me, sorry. Uh, he joined the Teneva Ramblers, who were a local trio, and with them, he had a weekly slot on the radio. Jimmy and another member of the band went to Bristol to get some money to buy, to buy a new car to go touring with the band. They found, uh, there they found Ralph Peer, who is a talent scout and record producer who discovered the Carter family. They found him, that he was doing some field recordings there. Excuse me. He, he, they found that he was doing some field recordings there. Rogers gained an audition with him, but on the same night, the band broke up. But he convinced Ralph to perform only him and his guitar. He recorded the songs The Soldier's Sweetheart, Baby, uh, Sleep Baby Sleep, excuse me, and earned $100 that night. As John Hartford had said before, Jimmy's songs were the first to do something that seemed simple, and that is that he sang clearly. You could understand every word that he sang. His lyrics were clear, his images made perfect sense, and his guitar lay, matter-of-factly, way back on the beat, and everything was very easygoing. In November of the same year, he recorded his first hit, Blue Yodel, T for Texas. A 12-bar blues with a mix of lyrics he had heard from the years with some jealousy crime introducing his trademark, the yodel. He was mixing the African-American blues and the white rural sounds in his music. The song sold a half a million copies, and within months he was playing theaters, broadcasting, and playing with a big vaudeville show. He wasn't bringing the time, excuse me, he wasn't bringing the old time sound. He was bringing something new to the audience. While the also popular Carter family was representing more of the image of the United family, Jimmy Rogers was representing the spirit of the Rambler. He had the role of the singing star. Merle Haggard has stated that Jimmy Rogers was one of the very first people in this country to take songs that were not written by someone who was a graduate from some music school and make hits out of it. This was like newsworthy of the day. His songs were about the Great Depression, 
They were about the blues of the people that lived during the time. Jimmy Rogers' emphasis on the weariness of people in this world and their desire to escape it. Excuse me. Jimmy Rogers' emphasis on the weariness of people in this world and their desire to escape it, as well as the many other stories and themes he tells in his songs, de developed from the historical context surrounding him. Many individuals sought solace in music during the Great Depression. And Jimmy Rogers, like other musicians, increasingly started to include themes of financial difficulty and the weariness of people into their lyrics and music. He forged a timeless musical style, excuse me. He, he forged a timeless musical style from a variety of diverse influences, including the traditional folk music of his Southern upbringing, early jazz, stage show yodeling, the work chants of black ro railroad section crews, and most importantly, African blues. African-American blues, excuse me. Uh, this style made him extremely well-known in his own lifetime and had a significant impact on the su subsequent ways, subsequent generation, sorry, whoa. Uh, this style ma made him extremely well-known in his lifetime and had a significant impact on subsequent generations of country musicians. Ooh, I'm getting tongue-tied, sorry. Um, uh, the, the Depression also made it possible for country music, like Jimmy's, to become widely popular on a national level as the nation's economy began to falter and economic crisis hit. By 1928, he had more recordings done. Oh, excuse me. Uh, by 1928, he had more recordings done, including Blue Yodel No. 2. With hit after hit, he was making around $1,000 a month, a lot of money at the time. But money was coming as fast as he could spend it. Rogers once said that money was no good until after you spent it. I wonder if there's any truth in that. In 1929, he appeared in his railroad clothes in a short movie called The Singing Brakeman. In the height of his success, he went back to Meridian in his luxury car, wearing luxury clothes. On the other hand, his health was getting weaker and it was getting harder, but still, he was still booking tours. On the recording side of things, he and Ralph were exper experimenting with new sounds, new formations, new musicians, jazz bands, orchestration, steel guitar, etc. He partnered with composer Elsie McWilliams, giving him some, some fresh material for his recordings. In 1930, he recorded the hit Mule Skinner Blues. In the same year in Hollywood, he recorded his Blue Yodel No. 9 with, a, uh, with none other than the growing jazz star Louis Armstrong. Uh, Rogers moved to San Antonio, Texas to look after his health. Interestingly enough, interestingly enough, there he became the yodeling cowboy, a type of character that would become really popular in the next couple of years in the States. Um, let's see. Around that period, he gave a break on touring. His health was getting weaker, and morphine and whiskey were of common use to alleviate the pain. Uh, he even released a song, TV Blues, about the sadness of the disease. That spoke to a lot of people that suffered from it at the time. He traveled to New York in 1933 to record more songs, but he was weak and had to record them mostly sitting down. He laid down six tracks, including Years Ago, which he recorded just like he started. Just him and his, and his guitar. Just himself and his guitar. Excuse me. Uh, the next few hours were intense. As he felt well enough to go to Coney Island and spend some time there, he then went back to his hotel, where in the next morning, he died at the age of 35. Uh, his body was taken to, on a train back to Meridian, with people paying respect along the way. He opened doors for the next generations to come and helped to provide, uh, excuse me, Jimmy Rogers opened doors for the next generations to come and helped to develop country music as a genre in the music industry during the Great Depression. He was the first to be inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame, and there's the Jimmy Rogers Museum in Meridian that was founded in 1976, which keeps the memory of the blue yodeler alive, and which I look forward to visiting one day after learning about him from this class. Uh, so again, I'll reiterate that Jimmy Rogers forged a timeless musical style from a variety of diverse influences, including the traditional folk, uh, excuse me, including the traditional so folk music of his southern upbringing, early jazz, stage show yodeling, the work chants of black, black ro uh, railroad section crews, and most importantly, African-American blues. This style made him extremely well known in his own lifetime and had a, a significant impact on the subsequent generations of country musicians. 
Uh, Rogers' recordings of Southern blues and ballads greatly contributed to the worldwide popularity of a distinctly American musical form. Uh, that was a summary of the main facts. If you want to know more about Jimmy's life and its influence on the on country music, I'll leave some links in the chat, or if this is on YouTube, the description. Uh, I wish you all a lovely day, and thank you for your attention and time.